Good morning, everyone. So this is the video for Sunday, September the second, and uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, so in this part of uh, e Ezekiel, uh, we're really given the perspective of, of uh, God into all the depravity um, that Israel and Judah had gone into. And uh, what Judah's accused of is, is going further than even uh, what Israel had gone. Um, and, and we see... Have you ever been involved in something where it's really going bad, but you hold out hope? And you hold out hope, and you hold out hope, and you're not willing to give up on it. Maybe it's a sports team, maybe a, uh, let's say a baseball team or something where... Uh, it, it's pretty bad. It's it's uh, you know it's twelve nothing in the in the after the uh, top of the first inning, and um, but there's nine innings, right? So you hold out hope, you hold out hope, you hold out hope, you hold out hope, and you really get to the seventh inning, and you're oh, I don't know eighth inning. Come on, guys, you can do this. And the ninth inning, and you just know it's not going to happen. You lose hope. All hope was gone. It was kind of that way with, with, with God and Judah here. Um, he held out hope. Uh, things kept getting worse and worse and worse, but, but he just he, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't pull the trigger. He wouldn't, uh, he wouldn't deal with it. Uh, well, I mean, he was dealing with it. He was sending in prophets. He was trying to call in them. He was bringing in correction. He was doing all kinds of stuff. Um, but he, he just he was not willing to let go of hope. And they got worse and they got worse and more depravity. And just when you think it couldn't get any, and they couldn't, then they started inventing sins. And it was just, we, we read in the passage today, it was just horrible. Horrible. Until they got to the point where really it couldn't get any worse. They had done everything you could possibly do. They had hurt God in every possible way that they could hurt Him. They hurt each other in every possible way they could hurt each other. They hurt other nations in every possible way that they could hurt other nations. They were just a deplorable people, absolutely deplorable. And it was only got to that point when there was absolutely no hope left that God brought the judgment. That's our dad. That's our father. He always hopes. He always hopes the very best for us. He, 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 he hopes that we will choose the best decision, make the best decisions, and choose the best way. Always, always, he's holding out hope. He comes to us and says, "Hey, you're too, you're you're too beautiful to be here. Come on, uh, or, or come on, you're 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 too wonderful." Too wonderful to be in this place, and and, and, he, and he holds out. He's that that, that that eternal optimist, always hoping that his children, his children, will get with the program, will will understand what's going on, and get, get that vision, realize how much he loves them, and and just that's why there's no judgment on this world yet. This is why Jesus hasn't returned yet, because because Father so hopes. He still hopes. He still hopes that everyone will be saved. He still hopes that everyone will turn to him. He still hopes that they will step into the wonderful, wonderful relationship that they could have with him. He's, that's, that's, his, that's his hope. People say, well, why hasn't Jesus returned yet? Because he is so wonderful. That's why. Because our Father is so wonderful. That's why. He hopes so much. He loves so much. His grace is so great. That's our dad. He will never leave us, never forsake us, never walk away from us. So honor him today. Bless him today. God bless.